Hello Year 9. I assume if you've clicked on this video that you're going to be joining me in September. I'm Miss Green and we are going to be together for the next two years studying Food and Nutrition GCSE with the EDUCAS exam board. Um, basically the course divides into two. During Year 10 you're going to cover all the theory work that you need to answer the exam paper. And we we'll also spend a lot of time practicing a wide range of food skills, um, not only to um, improve your skills, but to identify where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are, because in year 11, you're going to be able to select the appropriate dishes. And obviously, you choose to show the examiner your strengths and you choose to hide your weaknesses. During year 11, you're going to complete two pieces of coursework. Now, assignment one, which is released on the 1st of September, you can work on in the six weeks leading up to the half term. It's technically a science-based experiment, but often it's not that science-y. This year we had which is the best raising agent to use in scones. We've had which is the best fat to use in short plus pastry. And how low can you reduce the sugar in cakes? So, its title is science. And you definitely need to apply science, but it is food based. Now, there's a 2,000 word limit on this piece of work, which sounds phenomenally huge. But when you consider you'll have six complete weeks to work on it, the truth is many, many students end up spending time trying to delete it to get it down to the 2,000 words. So don't worry about that. Assignment two is preparing for the practical exam. Obviously, then doing the practical exam and evaluating it. Now, this question is released on the 1st of November. And I have to collect it in to mark it um, at, the end of the, uh, at the beginning of Easter, which is the end of March. Now, the only time you won't be working on this assignment is during December when you're going to be sitting your mocks. Now, there's a 30-page limit on this work, which, again, sounds absolutely huge. But you'll be surprised how quickly this builds up especially once you include photographs of practical work. After um, Easter, when we return to school, we will then look at your year 10 work and your mock. We will look for weaknesses, we will look for areas where you lack confidence, and we'll put together a revision programme which is going to prepare you for your exam. Now, the waiting. 50% of the marks are awarded for the two coursework pieces, and 50% of the marks is for the exam. The two coursework pieces, assignment one, is approximately half the marks of assignment two. So if you, we always swap over to assignment two as soon as we can, because that's where the bulk of the marks are. Um, but it really is worth you working on all sections. Uh, in that the marks do add together and collectively give you your final grade. Um, the major areas that we study are food commodities, nutrition, diet, good health, some science of food, where food comes from, and cooking and food preparation. These are equally weighted within um, both the exam and the coursework, so it's really important that we consider each of these areas. Now, um, each week you will do some practical work and they will be linked to the theme of the six week unit or a half term. You will cook on all the double lessons and in some of the single lessons I will demonstrate and then the following single lesson you will cook it independently. So the themes for the six week units in year 10 are fruits and vegetables when we also look at water soluble vitamins. Milk, cheese and yoghurt, where we then look at fat-soluble vitamins and the minerals, calcium and iron. Cereals, including flours, bread and pastry, where we look at carbohydrates in more depth. Meat, fish, poultry and eggs, where we look at proteins in more depth. Butter, oils and margarine, sugars and syrup, where we look at fats in more depth. And soy, beans, nuts and seed, where we look at fibre in more depth. To organise your work, you really do need to bring a folder into school. Now, many people like to research and find a really unusual one, because when they stay in the box under my desk, if you've got a really funky pattern on the outside, you can pick out your folder really quickly. 
We work on individual sheets of paper and we add them to your folder as you go. Now, all lessons have an element of theory work within them, even those that are primarily practical. Once food is in the oven, you quickly do your washing up, you get your worksheet and you get on with your, your theory work. There is a wide range of work to be covered on this syllabus and unless we keep up to date, we are going to fall behind and that must not happen. If the whole class were to begin to fall behind with the theory work, I would cancel some of the practicals and we would do extra theory lessons. If it's only one or two individual people who fall behind on the theory work, then I will stop them from working so that they can catch up with their theory. The theory is really, really important. I will always give you the recipes at the beginning of each six-week unit, and I will put spares either on the door or on the shelf um, by my desk. So you'll always have access if you lose a sheet. But I will also be posting them on Show My Homework or Google Classroom, whichever system we're using in September. At the end of each six-week unit, you will complete an assessment. Now, this is always going to be the first single lesson after either a half term or Christmas or Easter break. It's really important that you comprehensively revise. It's really important that you prepare revision materials so that by the end of the year you have a whole library of revision materials which is going to help you in year 11 when it comes to actually doing your GCSE. Now as part of our course we are required to study two international cuisines and the British cuisine. Now, this can be done using textbooks, using library books, using the internet, visiting restaurants, um, buying the food in supermarkets. But it can also be done by visiting an international country and studying their food. Now, no way is this a compulsory part of the course. This is a nice little extra if it is possible for you to afford it. Now, sadly, this year, we were not able to go. And obviously I'm using the PowerPoint that we had prepared for this year. Um, we were due to go on the 1st to the 5th of June. That didn't happen. But I've been able to transfer the booking to next year so that you guys have the opportunity to go. So let's tell you all about the trip that we have prepared. The trip is to Italy. And to the Seren uh, Bay of Naples is the technical term. We are using a company that we've used several times before. They are really good. The school uses them, geography uses them, sixth form have used them before. So we know that we're dealing with people that we trust. Um, there's quite a lot that we have included within the costing. Obviously, return flights. Obviously, coaches to and from airports. Um, most of your meals, some days we're actually making them as part of your lesson. You will then be eating the food that you make. We have paid a little extra so that throughout the tour, you will be using a private coach, which will take you to and from each of the activities. Um, and so the final cost covers virtually everything other than a little pocket money. We will be traveling via via EasyJet and we will be using their carry-on baggage. Now, to make this a little more pleasant, I've been able to get a booking in um, a holiday village. So you will be in little um, family-sized um, holiday units, um, either fours or sixes. We'll, we're all in a row right next to each other. Um, they've got some lovely facilities there, which means in the evening, after we've been on our various tours, we'll be able to relax together. Now, obviously, there'll be restrictions. You won't be able to randomly go in the pool or randomly walk down to the beach. We will do this as a group, and we will have a chat as a group and decide what it is we want to do together. Um, now, I don't apologize for this, although those of you who are eagle-eyed will see that the check-in at Luton Airport is at 4 a.m. Now that's very early, but it does mean we get to Italy by 10 o'clock in the morning, which means you have a whole day in Italy rather than a whole day traveling. So I know it's an early start, but you'll be able to have a snooze on the coach and a snooze on the, on the plane. Once we get there, we will, and we've checked in, 
We will take you for, to, for some free time in Sorrento, and then you're going to have an ice cream making class. Here's Sorrento, looking lovely, and wow, some nice ice creams. The next day, you will be have it. You will be going to a cookery school, and you will be making your own lunch. Then in the afternoon, you will be visiting an olive mill, and um, which is attached to a, an olive farm which also grows lemons, so you will be able to um, see the traditional methods of producing lemoncello and olive oil. Here's some students looking at the lemons, and there's some olives. The next day, we'll be looking at more modern food production, um, in that we're going to look at a pasta factory, and in the afternoon, you will be given a guided tour of Pompeii. Um, those of you who um, are interested in ancient history will know that Pompeii is the little town that was covered by lava when Mount Vesuvius erupted, which is the lava has actually been able to preserve it, so it's really interesting. There's your pasta factory, and here are some of the streets in Pompeii. The next day we're going to look at cheese production, another of Italy's most famous foods. So we're going to look at a mozzarella farm, and then in the Afternoon, we're going to, now I believe you said this, Pisatium is how you say it. Um, so we'll be looking at production of cheese and another archaeological site in the afternoon. So on the departure day, um, again, using my policy of making the most of the time we're there, we will not be leaving until 7 o'clock at night. So we are going on a drive along one of the most famous roads in all the world. Um, any of you Top Gear fans, you will know it well. The um, road that leads along the edge of the Amalfi Coast. Um, although, with a coach driver driving, we should be able to look at it, which is a good thing. We'll have some time in Amalfi and some time in Ravello to have a little look round, maybe buy a few um, souvenirs, etc., etc. Um, there is the Amalfi Coast. It looks spectacular. Um, and the scenes up at the top are incredible. So we will then be going to the airport at 7 o'clock at night, which, yes, I'm very sorry. It means it'll be very, very late when you get back to school, but you will have made the most of your time there. Um, obviously, Rayburn are an excellent company, and they are covered with all of the safety um, or, um, forms and regulations and they um, have lots that they offer us to support us and help us while we are out there. Um, this is an amazing trip. It's not cheap, but it is amazing. If it's possible for you to go, then it would be lovely. But I am very aware that's a lot of money. It's going to be approximately £800. We were hoping that the flights were going to be released on Thursday and we could give you a definitive price. But the, the flights weren't released. We know that a lot of people are going to be entering a period of financial difficulty due to the coronavirus. So it is important that you think about it. If you would like your child to go, or if you as a child would like to go and you've discussed this with your parents, please email Mrs. Heath. I would love you to come. I am really looking forward to going. It's something I would be very interested to see. I think I can learn as much as you guys can. But it's not essential for your exam. You must bear that in mind. You can study all of these things via the internet, but it would be lovely to see it in real life. Please express an interest, if you can or you think you're going to be able to, come on the trip, and I will see all of you in September.